Hi everyone and welcome to episode 91 of the Talk is Cheap show. Hope you're all well, healthy and COVID free. Thanks to everyone for tapping in today. We truly appreciate your support. As you can see, once again, we're live in the AFTV studios in North London. And I think we're going to have a great show today. Um, but before we do all that, our now obligatory introductions. Joining me as always, to my left here, my co-host, resident expert, show analyst and good friend. The knowledgeable, the kosher, the man with the certified kudos, the kinetic, the kindred spirited, the kind hearted, the king size, the king of kings, the man with the massive kahunas, the kingpin of social media. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is both my honour and pleasure to be able to introduce to you today, Mr. Curtis Shaw from Curtis Shaw TV in the house. What are you saying, bro? Hi, <laughs> yo. <laughs> You've been studying them words for a week. I've waited two weeks to do two that. Two weeks right? to do that one. <laughs> nah, man, I'm good, man. Yeah? The intro is legendary, isn't it? I'm trying, know. man. I'm trying, man. I'm trying, man. But no, happy to be here, man. And, you know, back to, back to Arsenal business after back the to international Arsenal business, break. Yeah. So how did you find the international break, bro? Do you know what? When, when it came, I thought, you know what? Maybe I could do with a break from Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, a tough good start. But then when you start watching the games, you think, you know what? I need Arsenal back, man. I don't, I don't particularly enjoy the international breaks. Although I would say that the England games now, uh, I think we're in a better place than we yeah, were yeah. a few years back. So credit to Gareth Southgate for that. Although there's still one or two issues I've got with the team, man. Mm. I still think that... It's my personal opinion, people, that we have a very good group of players yeah. amongst the best players or best squad, certainly in Europe, if not the world. And I still think we're slightly underachieving. Mm. And people will throw at me, yeah, but you know, we got to World Cup semi-final, we got to the Euros final. And I get that, man. We've definitely made improvements and I credit the manager on, you know, things like bringing the team together. Yeah. Um, they look more of a united bunch of guys and the atmosphere around the team seems better. But talking purely in terms of performance, I still get the impression that we should be doing better. Yeah. The game against Poland was a prime example, man. I, I thought we should have beaten them. I mean, Poland are no walkover team. But, you know, I mean, you won nil up a couple of minutes ago. You should really hold on yeah. to that, really. I mean, you? let's be honest. England should have won the Euros. Yeah. To play a European Championships in your own country, only your fans allowed in the stadium, France, Belgium, all these teams eliminated. Italy were a good team. Yeah. But yeah. one nil up at home after five minutes, That's you've right. got to win that trophy. You should have so. won that, yeah. Like you said, I think he's improved the harmony. It they has. look like a good group, but I just think tactically is a little bit underwhelming at times. Yeah, I, I couldn't have put it better. Mm. You've articulated that very well. But listen, man, um, we'll see how they get on. I'm sure they'll qualify. Yeah. And we'll see where we go from there. It was great to see uh, Saka get a good reception and yeah. he got his goal against Andorra, wasn't it? Yeah, so. very good. On his birthday as well. As, on his birthday as well, yeah. so that was encouraging from an Arsenal perspective. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, man. So, okay, uh, moving on then. So, uh, those of you who watch the show regularly you know that we have what we call our news and notes section, which is uh, basically a segment of the show where we look at items making the headlines. Sometimes they might be relevant to us, or sometimes not. But it's just little things that we yeah, think yeah. we can discuss. Um, I thought we'd kick off with a rumor that's been doing the rounds. I know you'll probably welcome this. Uh, Arsenal being linked with uh, Antonio Conte. <laughs> <laughs> oh my days. Oh. Uh, I thought oh. that might uh, get, elicit that type of response from you. but um, yeah. So what do you think now? Smoke screen, what? Uh, Pie yeah. in the sky? What? Do you know what? I've covered this Wishful a few thinking, times. what is it? I've covered it a few times in videos and I think it's difficult to get done because I think now the transfer window's closed with our position in the league at the moment, a manager of that bigger reputation is going to look at that and think that could do more harm than good to his <laughs> reputation. Wow, wow. At the start of a season when he, he's got the transfer window, he may have looked at it. The only thing that gives me the slight hope is he's a very outspoken person. Mm. And I just think he would have come out and said, I'm not interested. Mm. I think even though he probably looks at him and thinks, mm, I don't really want it. I think if the position came up and they offered him a deal that appealed to him, don't forget he had face-to-face -face talks with Daniel Levy 
for the Tottenham job. Mm. He didn't take it because he said he didn't like what was on offer. Yeah. You've got to put the money down. You've got to put the bag on the mm. table and mm. say, listen, there's the money to rebuild. There's mm. your wage. There's your staff members. Become the hero. He said many times in interviews that he likes a challenge. He likes to be the hero. He'd you know? certainly be a challenge. And it would be. A, he'd have to be a superhero. <laughs> but he could be the one that we need. Uh, listen, for me, if and when Mikel Arteta leaves. <laughs> I think we know now it's a case of when, yeah. not if. Wow, wow. Uh, um, I just think this you is... You really think that, yeah? yeah it's I when, do. not if. Yeah, wow. I do. I just think... Um, I think we'll probably have uh, an uplift in fortunes mm. now with the players that have come in and the run we've got, but I don't, I don't see Arteta finishing the season. Mm. Um, mm. And if he doesn't, I think Arsenal... You've tried Emery, who's a good manager, but I would say not an elite manager. Mm. You've then gone for Arteta, who was just left field, never managed. You've took mm. a big risk. Mm. Now you've got to get the best manager you can get. Yeah. And yeah. I, I would say, along with Zidane, Conte is probably mm. the best manager. So you can see it happening? I mean, I think we'd have a chance. It's mm. whether the Cronkies would have the ambition to give him what he wants. But yeah. we'd have yeah. to get him, in my opinion, if we could. Yeah, I mean... Pfft. If a guy like that becomes available. I mean, listen, my thoughts are that if you're Arsenal, a big club like that, and where we are right now in terms of the football, you've got to be doing your due diligence, yeah. really. You? You've got to put that call out, that message. I know that might sound a bit schadenfreude for if you're Mikel Arteta, man, but that's the game at the that top is, level. Yeah. So yeah. somebody somewhere in the Arsenal hierarchy would have probably put it out there with a phone call or, you know what I mean, a third party message yeah, to someone yeah. and say, listen, man, what do, you think? what do you think? Would you be interested if worse comes to worse and we do need to make the change? What are you saying? Yeah. Um, so I think there's probably some truth to the rumours. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, it's whether they can persuade him yeah. to come. Um, Would you be in favour of the appointment if Arteta was... Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, come on now. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, at the end of the day, man, you can't really, you yeah. know what I mean, if you've got the club's best interests at heart and you have the opportunity to... I mean, I always say to people that, to me, a manager's the most important signing you're going to make at a club, yeah, isn't agree, it? Yeah. So if things are not going so well and you've got the opportunity to bring in somebody like this, then you can't really overlook it, really. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, another story that's been doing the rounds is slightly off the Premier League, but it's kind of related to what we were talking about earlier with international football. Um, yeah. The World Cup, there's a proposal to uh, introduce a two-year World Cup rather than four at present. What's yeah. your thoughts on that? Bro? Uh, do you know what? I just, I don't see how you can do it. Mm. I really don't. You know, with, you know, you have the Copa America, you have the World Cup, the Euros. You know, sometimes these players need a break. I know mm. as the fan, we just look at it and think, I want more, more, more. Yeah, There's nothing yeah. worse than a summer with no football. I would love to watch international tournaments every year. I just think sometimes a player needs to be able to switch mm. off and just, mm. I think you're asking too much. I don't think it's coming from a place of football. It's, it's mm. money. Yeah, it's money coming. talks, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody once told me a very, a wise man once told me a very important thing. In anything, always follow the money trail. Uh, yeah. So whenever I hear a proposal like this, I always think to myself, this must be money, money orientated, or of what's course. the financial gains to this? And it's pretty yeah. obvious you know, for FIFA, yeah. if you have a two-year World Cup, that's increased revenue yeah. every two years. But apart from that, there are the people who are in favour of it are saying that it would help some of the smaller countries. Again. To maybe qualify or, you know, get a chance yeah. to qualify for the World Cup. I mean, they've already increased the amount of teams. Mm. I guess this two-year proposal is to somehow maybe try and increase the chances of some of the smaller countries. Other people are saying it, it further dilution of the tournament won't be in its best interest. What's your thoughts on that, man? I mean, I, d I do get it from some points of view because the World Cup is, is such an elite event every four years is a little bit long yeah. in a sense you think wow i have to wait four more years for yeah, that um yeah. but but at the I'm same sure time the that players. in itself is an attraction isn't it because it's an elite tournament every yeah. four years you get to say you know you're crown champions of the world yeah. that gives it that extra prestige, layer of prestige yeah if you reduce it to two years that kind of takes away yeah. from that a little bit i mean listen the olympics are every four years yeah um but then having said that, in athletics, 
they have the world championships every two years. And even you look at like tennis, you know, Wimbledon's every year. Yeah. yeah. Um, so listen, if they throw enough money at it, it wouldn't surprise me if it happens. Mm. But. Um, it seems to have a lot of backing, especially yeah. amongst the smaller nations, because obviously if you're a smaller nation and it's going to mean that you know, every two years you get a chance, yeah. you're going to... I mean, I mean, listen, if it happens, I'll be watching it, you know. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I mean, I, let's be purely selfish here. Yeah. If it's every two years and Jamaica gets to the next yeah, World Cup, me and you are not going to be complaining. No, I won't be complaining. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, even with every year with Jamaica probably they still, still make not, it, no. but, um, but hey... But yeah, it's an interesting. We'll see what happens there. Yeah, it, yeah. Kind of, it's, it's kind of opening up though, it because is at first, when it was being muted, it was like 100% no way. But all of a sudden, you started to hear a lot of people say, well, it might not be such a bad idea. And mm. then you're seeing a lot of the smaller countries actively coming out and saying that we would be in favour yeah. of it. So you never know, man. Okay, um, going back to the Premier League this weekend, yeah. um, Ronaldo's return, CR7. Um, back to Man United, uh, massive for the Premier League, massive for Man United, and it's let's face it, it's got interest, you know, across the country, yeah. across the world actually. Shirt sales been flying off. What's your thoughts on Ronaldo coming back? Will I mean, it work? I mean, first of all, I have to say I'm a massive fan of him as a player. I think mm. he's elite, one of the best I've ever seen. Mm. His mentality and everything. Did um, you have him above Messi? Probably not. Mm, okay. Ju just short of Messi, just short, I think. Just short, but close. Yeah. But close. Yeah, he's um, definitely up there. Yeah. Although I do respect the fact he's done it in multiple countries. You that's, know, that's so what, that's, so what, that's where yeah, the yeah, argument yeah, could yeah, be. Yeah. Um, it was funny because someone put up a thing saying Wayne Rooney's 35, he's in management and <laughs> overweight, and Ronaldo's 36, and he's still, you know, at the is top he 36 or 37? 30, he turns 37 in February. Oh, okay. Right. But um, no, I think for Man United. Look, I don't think United had any plans of trying to sign him. I think it was a case of, yeah. listen, Oli, if you don't make a move, he's going to Man City. And I think <laughs> exactly, they said, yeah. just do it. I say it looked to um, me as well. For, uh, listen, I think he'll score goals. I, I think people have to realise it ain't the Ronaldo that left. He no, ain't going to get no. the ball in his own half and run past five players. No, no. He's going to play the whip for the 18-yard box, put crosses in, give him service. Bruno ain't taking no more penalties. <laughs> Forget <laughs> that. That's it. Forget the free kicks of penalties. Bruno Fernandez is done, mate. <laughs> you just give the ball to Ronaldo. Yeah. So I, I think from the Premier League, it's brilliant because if you look over the years, when we look at the very, very top players, they don't often play in the Premier League. We've never had Messi, mm. Ronaldinho, mm. Mm. R9, Ronaldo, Neymar, you know. Mm they tend to leave the Premier League and go to Spain. So yeah, even yeah. at the age of 36, I think, uh, I think it's great to have him back yeah. in the league. Although, you know, I'm, I'm a bit mm. worried what will happen when uh, Rob Holding plays mm. against him. <laughs> <laughs> but will it work though from a United perspective? Because let's face it, man, um, they're bringing him in. Yeah. Yes, he's going to inevitably score goals. Quite a few of them, I would imagine, yeah. over the course of the season. But I would have thought they're bringing him in, apart from the obvious commercial value, um, in terms of the football, I would imagine that should be their cherry on the cake in yeah. terms of winning stuff. And I would imagine they're not going to bring him in to win an FA Cup. No, or, no, uh, do you know what I mean? No. So he's either Champions League or the Premier League. Now, listen, he went to Juve on the premise of winning the Champions League for them. He couldn't deliver that there. No. Do you think that he will deliver a Champions League or a Premier League to Man United? I've said before, I don't think Man United will win the league or the Champions League with Solskjaer as manager. Oh, right. I okay. just don't think he's good enough. I think when it comes to the crunch and, and he has to make tactical decisions, I don't think mm. he's relying on individual brilliance. Man United are mm. individual brilliance FC. He creates a good atmosphere in the changing room. He puts all them <laughs> ballers on the pitch. You go and win me the yeah. game. But I think it's very difficult to win a title is, yeah. like that. So, Mind you, some people might argue a certain Leicester City under Claudio Ranieri. That was the model they had. It's a bit of a, that was the same template, wasn't it? Nature won it almost yeah. that, you know. But no disrespects to Ranieri. I, I don't think you could call him like elite in terms no, of his tactical not, nows. No, it wasn't. I think he was an enabler, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Like you said, he got the team together and said, "Listen, man, this is a you want to play. You go out there and do it." Yeah. I still. Do you know what? They've got a chance because you look at their attack is ridiculous on paper. Yeah. Um, they might go and win the league for him where he doesn't even have to do yeah. that. Well, that's what I'm suggesting. I, I, I think he's, 
You don't want to tinker around too no, much with it. I think there'll be challenges. I think they'll be right up there. Right, I just, okay. I, I kind of get the impression that maybe Chelsea and City have got a little bit more in terms of the system. I watched Man United against Wolves the other week, and I just thought, you know, Wolves could have probably won that game. United, there's something about them. I still think they lack a midfielder. Yeah, yeah. Um, but listen, they've got a chance. If Ronaldo hits the ground yeah, running, that yeah, could make yeah. the difference. But yeah, I mean, yeah. amazing that his, his debut's not even on TV. It's a three wow. o'clock kickoff, and they haven't. It's moved. against Newcastle, yeah. right? Yeah, they if might he do that. If starts that, he'll yeah, be, yeah, yeah. be eating in that one. Listen, man, he's going to bring the swag with him, yeah. uh, confidence levels. But I am a little bit, well, I'm really not that bothered in terms of Man United. Mm. That's their problem or their thing to deal with. But people like Greenwood, I wonder how he must be feeling. Like, you know what I mean? Martial, guys like that, they must be thinking, you know what I mean? The thing is, if I'm Ma I get you because it's going to push them yeah. out a little bit. Yeah. But at the same time, if I'm Mason Greenwood, I'm thinking, how much can I learn off him? Mm. on the training ground, do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, it might just be the training ground. It might yeah. only be the training ground. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it will make people lift their game. You know, yeah. you've got to step your game up. Greenwood should be saying, I want to get in the team next to him and, and sure. play around him. So, uh, yeah, it's a massive boost for them. I saw, like you said, with the shirt sales. Yeah, yeah, well. I think well, they've paid for him already, aren't they? Again, follow the money trail. Yeah, man. yeah. But, um, yeah, I'll be interested to see how he gets on over the course of the season. Yeah, um, yeah. so let's see how that goes. It. I think he will. Yeah. But like I said, is it going to get them to the promised land? Yeah, um, that's the question. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, right, OK, so that's fun and games over yeah. with. Uh, going back to uh, regular features, which is reviewing our last game since yeah. the last show. Yeah. Um, I don't want to dwell too much on this, nah. um, but we have to talk about it. It was the last game. Um, man City, man, away from home. Um, well, what can I say? The words that come to mind, humiliation, embarrassment, 5-0 uh, away defeat. Goals by Gundogan, two by Fernando Torres, Gabriel Jesus and Hernandez, Granit Xhaka sent off. City, 25 shots on target to our one. Um, City, 81% 81 81 possession. Apparently it's the highest possession stat since these stats have been recorded in the Premier League. Did we hit rock bottom in this game? I mean, I predicted a 2-1 defeat. <laughs> um, and which we'd have took that now when you look at that. But everything that could have gone wrong went wrong, let's be honest. Uh, I think you have to start with the team selection. I thought it was horrendous. Um, to play Kalasinac against Manchester mm. City. You know, yeah, you've got was... Pablo Mari. And, and I know Pablo Mari hasn't been good, but he signed Pablo Mari. He signed uh, Cedric. And you got these guys on What's the bench. What's happened to Cedric, by the way? He seems to have fallen off a cliff. Yeah, I don't know. He <laughs> had a fallout with him. I don't know what's happened. But again, those questions come back up. You know, you've loaned out Saliba and you're playing Kalasinac away at Manchester City, a guy we've been trying to sell the whole summer. The, the tactics were wrong. Granite Xhaka, who, you know me, you know me. Yeah. We've had this discussion a number have, of times. I do not rate that guy for reasons like this. Yeah. I've got to admit, I have cannon. tried to play devil's advocate. Not, not exclusively. I do actually believe he's a better player than some of the Arsenal fans give him, well, a lot of the Arsenal fans <laughs> give him credit for. But when he does something like that, um, it's hard to really defend it. Although... And I don't want to sound like I'm defending it. The following day, we saw a tackle by Paul Pogba. Mm. It was very similar. Actually led to a goal yeah. for Man United. You know what I mean? Actually led to a goal, whereas with Xhaka, he gets sent off. Some people were saying... Some people were even suggesting that he might have done it deliberately because he didn't fancy I don't. I don't agree with that. But you have to look at Xhaka's record. I mean, that's another sending off. How many of those have they been now? I think he's had six, hasn't he? Yeah. 44 yeah. yellow cards since he's been wow. here as well. Um, it's poor, man. It's, it's so poor. poor. So poor. And, and, and the thing I, I say as well, and I hate to go back on this, you look at Arteta's reaction when Pepe gets that red card last season. He, he was spitting feathers. He, he, yeah. he criticised him openly. He dissed him in public. With Granit Xhaka, he goes, oh, when Xhaka got the red card, we kind of... And I'm like, is that all you're going to say about it? Like, the guy yeah. just two-footed someone, although there was minimal contact. He's let the team down. You've put your team under more pressure there because it was 2-0 at the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, 
and then from there the game was finished. That's probably the worst team in the Prem that you could go down to 10 minutes. Because <laughs> yeah, exactly. they keep the ball better than anybody. So. Yeah. And it just got worse from there. And uh, we It was were, one we of those looking. where you were literally watching between oh. your, your fingers. Because you, I honestly thought that that could be seven or eight. Yeah, yeah, I thought so as um, well. Let in me. fact, and I'm going to say this now, and um, some people might be shocked, others not so much, but there were some people that I spoke to and that I saw online, not yourself, but one or two people were almost saying, well, listen, if we're going to lose heavy, make it be seven or eight if there we get goes. the manager out. You know what it's I mean? Crazy, um, it? it was that bad a day, man. It was. Um, and then to make matters worse, we end up, the fallout of that game means that we were bottom of the table and lo and behold, who's topping the table at the moment? I don't want to say it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the fallout from the game was pretty seismic, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, the aftermath was both brutal and damning. And once again, um, Arsenal were being condemned, man, as being weak, having no heart, having no plan. And obviously the managers come under question. Um, just give me your thoughts on, you know what I mean, your like, overall assessment of his performance in it. The manager? Yeah. What, for that game? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Sambi Lakonga on the bench. Why? Don't understand it. Thomas Partey's not available. Everyone's going, right, Jaco and Sambi Lakonga, or even, he played Odegaard centre midfield. Even, I even thought he might have played Xhaka. We were saying he might even play Xhaka and El Nenny and go defensive. That's what I was he saying. He played yeah, Odegaard centre mid. And I'm like, when, when does he really play centre mid in the Premier League against Man City where they're mm. going to have more of the ball? Mm. You're going to be chasing it. It just didn't work. I mean, he, he played three at the back, which we were kind of mm. saying, yeah, maybe go with that. But to play Kolasinac mm. and, uh, and then... Holding and Chambers, you know, both big centre backs. One's losing a header to Gundogan, the other yeah, one, Ferran Torres. They're about five foot seven. G Gundogan is probably at best five nine. He's yeah. probably five eight. Yeah. And he's out jumping. Chambers. Chambers. He's what? At least six foot. Six, foot, six foot two. two. Think, yeah. And then Holding's losing that to Ferran Torres, who's five eight nine as well. It's just mm. like it's basic, it's isn't so it? Can't even it do was the a basics. horrible day, man. It was a horrible day. I mean. And then, of course, we had to put up with a tweet from a certain Mesut Ozil. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was kind of ironic. Yeah. Um, what did he put? He put, trust the process. Yeah, to yeah. Broken heart. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, Mesut, so. man. What, what do you think, then, of the uh, people who are trying to be a bit more positive? And uh, I wouldn't say they're necessarily Arteta defenders, but mm. the ties of this world, who say things like, well, listen, man, there are mitigating circumstances, the COVID stuff, the injuries, people like Partey not being around. Do you think that makes any difference? It does make a difference. Um, but as I always say in football, sometimes you lose in football. There's a way to lose. There's a, there's a way to lose. For you sure. can go to Man City, go down to 10 men, shut up shot, make it very difficult for them to break you down. But we were just wide open. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it was, was it the day after or something, um, Chelsea played Liverpool. Now, I know Chelsea have got far better defenders than mm -hmm. us. But they and went down to 10 and men. Midfield. Well, and, and manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they went down to 10 men in the first half at Anfield. They didn't concede a goal for the rest mm -hmm. of the game um, because they just, ha they just kept things tight and made life difficult. I believe if other teams went down to 10 men, they would make it harder than what we did. Yeah. We're just too easy to play against. So I think you make an excellent point. I think one of the things that disappointed me the most about that game, I mean, let's be honest, right? Let's keep it 100. We did not go to City expecting to win. No. Me and you were saying, if we get a draw out of that game, it's a great result. A great result. Yeah. Um, and we go a goal down early, um, which was poor. Um, and we've spoken about that. But what you're looking for is a bit of heart, a bit of resilience, a bit of you know what I mean, togetherness. And to be honest, we just capitulated, yeah. man. And I think that is the most worrying thing. Yeah. Um, and it's just not good enough, man. No. It's not. It was, it was disappointing. And, and then you look in at your leaders, your Aubameyang. Your leaders? <laughs> well, do we have leaders? But do <laughs> but you know what I mean? I mean, Ed was oh. saying in that interview and stuff about Xhaka and this four-year contract, and we didn't want to sign another midfielder who was better than them. And you're like, this guy's just got sent off again. He's let you down. Mm. So it was disappointing. It was, it was very it was disappointing, very disappointing. Man. Um, But like I always say, with football, the beautiful thing about football is, is that 
you're going to get an opportunity soon yeah. to correct things. Yeah. The international break is over. And Arsenal, this weekend, we get a shot at redemption. Um, so, massive game this weekend. Six points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Premier League's two bottom clubs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Norwich and Arsenal, in that order as well. Norwich are above us in the yeah. table. But, yeah, I mean, listen, man, some people are jokingly referring to it as a relegation six-pointer. Mm. But make no mistake, man, this is a big game. Yeah. Um, a game that Arsenal simply have to win. Yeah. I'm, I'm describing it as win or bust for our term, man. I would agree. I mean, if we don't win, and win well as well, I mean, I don't think the fans will accept a scrappy win. Mm. Um, I mean, listen, if we win and win well, then no doubt Arteta and his, uh, I wouldn't say legion of followers, his followers yeah. will say, listen, man, you know I mean? There were mitigating circumstances. Because I'm, I'm hearing some positive news on the injury front. Yeah, yeah, I saw um, today that part A, Gabriel, Ben White are back. All back, which is great nice. news, man. Yeah. Um, so listen, man, I'm going to be fair. If we go into this game and we get a result where those guys come back and we, we don't just win, but the performance is worthy of the name, I will be prepared to scale back some of my previous criticisms and say, look, listen, don't get me wrong, Brentford was poor, Chelsea was dreadful, and City was embarrassing. Um, but I would be willing to scale back some of my previous criticism, saying, well, you know what, that happened, but at least now it is a reason for optimism. Mm. If we get the win and the performance is good, but if we get a scrappy win or if it's a draw or worse still, we lose. Yeah. I mean, no, you know we, I mean? we can't. We, we, we can't, cannot can't. lose this game. We have to win. Mm. There's no other result. And I think we will win. Yeah. I do. I, I, do you know what? I think this is, if you could have picked any fixture, <laughs> this is what you would have picked. Norwich at home with basically our full squad. I, no disrespect and I, listen, I better be careful what I say in case we don't get the result. But I think Norwich are the worst team in the Premier League. Uh, well, statistically we are. I know we are, but you know what I mean? The, the, the table tends to level itself after mm. about eight or nine games. Yeah, yeah. Um, this has to be the start of a run for Arteta. Mm. Whether I'm in favour of Arteta or not, Arteta or not is one thing, but if he can put a run together, he's got his players back, he's signed obviously a number of players in this window, then we've all got to get behind him. Yeah. I always say I don't really care who the manager is if you do well. Yeah. I care yeah. when you're struggling, that's when I'll question you. So he's got to get results. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what sort of team would you like to see take the field on Saturday? I think he's got to go back to a back four. I don't think you have to play three at the back against no, Norwich. No, I wouldn't have thought um, so. I, would, I want to see Gabriel and Ben White play together mm. because I think they're our best two centre-backs. Could I just ask you, I mean, you've gone straight yeah. into the back four. There's been certain suggestions that Leno has not looked um, mm. his best and he's kind of talking like he's not going to be a long-term fixture. Yeah. Um, some people are saying they wouldn't mind seeing Ramsdale because I think... When he came in, oh, 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 listen, it was against West Brom and, you know what I mean, yeah. but he did look quite sharp. What, what's your thoughts on the goalkeeping situation? I mean, when I, I think even though we lost 5-0 to City, I think Leno actually played quite yeah, well. Yeah, that's Could true. Could have been more. Yeah. Uh, listen, if these stories are true that Leno is saying he doesn't want to sign a new contract, he's thinking about leaving in the summer, then I do think you have to think about yeah. putting Ramsdale in because... You've paid £24 million mm. for him. We haven't paid that for him to sit down. Yeah. If Leno is not willing to commit to the club, then I think uh, I, I wouldn't mind. Um, I want people playing for us and yeah. who want to be yeah. there. So if that happens, I, I wouldn't be against that. Yeah, because I'm, I'm kind of looking at that goalkeeping situation. I think the energy around that is definitely different to when we brought in Matt Ryan. Yeah. We paid a lot of money for this guy. I know some people wasn't, I think yourself was one yeah. of them, wasn't wholly convinced. But listen, he's here now and they spent a lot of money on him. And then at the same time, Leno seems to be dropping hints that, you know what I mean, he's talking no, no. about being you know, in his future may lie elsewhere. So I yeah. think, you know what, they need to start blooding this And stuff. this will probably be the ideal game. Yeah. Because yeah. it might not, you know, it's not going to be as difficult as a City or, or Chelsea. So, mm. like, like I said, yeah, at centre-back, I think that Gabriel Ben White. Yeah, I'm looking forward shit. to seeing that. We haven't seen that yet, have we? We haven't seen it. Yeah. And then, like I said, I mean, one good thing that came out of that debacle at Manchester <laughs> I think I know what's coming in. <laughs> was uh, at least Granite Xhaka now is suspended. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I want to see Sambi Lekonga and Thomas yeah, Partey yeah, because yeah. I think that is our best midfield. Yeah. I know we haven't seen... I wouldn't play. argue with that. I wouldn't I saw, argue with that. I saw Sambi Lekonga play for Belgium, look good. 
I thought Thomas Partey in pre-season looked good. Obviously, the injury. Helped yeah, that's the back. only problem with Partey, isn't it? I mean, when you come back from injury, yeah, and we've had the international break, he's not played any um, Premier League football this season. You know what it's like, 100 mile an hour. Even against Norwich, they're going to be committed. They're going to try and come and do, yeah, 100%. do a job on us, let's face it. Um, so that could be quite a difficult game for him. Although I do get what you're saying. Yeah. If you had to choose an opponent, no disrespect to Norwich, but... That's who you would want. Yeah, um, you know, we have to keep it real. But yeah. even so, I expect them to be physical, committed, and, you know I mean, Party's had his problems with injuries, yeah. so... Yeah, we need him fit. I would then I would play Odegaard in the 10, because uh, Smith Rowe apparently missed the under-21 game with yeah, illness. that's right. Um, Saka and Pepe out wide. And then uh, Aubameyang up front. Uh, obviously, Tierney left back. Uh, right back, I mean, I don't know what the situation is with Tommy Yasu, uh, the new guy, because uh, yeah. Arteta said they're trying to sort out his work permit. So I don't think he'll feature for this game, though, really. No. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Lacquer, you think you'll feature? No, I would, I would have him on the bench. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, I want Saka and Pepe to be our wingers this year. Right. Um, with Martinelli challenging as well. And then... Uh, We've got to get Aubameyang in form. If Aubameyang's going to start his season again, Norwich at home, they lost 5-0 to Man City as mm. well. They're not great at the back. Mm. Aubameyang needs a goal. He needs a goal in this game to, to get his confidence back. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think that first 11 that you've um, suggested there, I would go along with that. Um, I think the subs will be important. Yeah, so um, Lacazette. So, yeah. yeah, I'm glad that Lacazette will be available. Um, and, yeah, I mean... We just got to hope that the guys that play on the day do their jobs. Yeah. And um, what do you think the crowd uh, response will be? Do you know what? I think they'll get behind the team. Mm. Uh, don't get me wrong. If we were How long goal, would that last? Though? Well, yeah, if it's <laughs> nil-nil or we're a goal down, yeah. then it might turn different. But they need to score early, yeah. get the crowd on side. And, you know, like you said, I want... One thing under like Arsene Wenger, when we play teams like Norwich at home, I used to turn up and just go, how, how many are we yeah, going to beat yeah, these yeah, by? Because yeah, we just yeah. wipe the floor with teams like that. Um, I'd love to see Arsenal win convincingly, you know, and give, give the crowd a lift. Yeah. And um, I think we've got four league games till the next international break. You know, we need to be trying to win all four of them if possible. So. Yeah, I mean, listen, um, we've got Norwich. The game after that is Burnley, and then we've got certain Tottenham coming up as well. So it's not going to be easy, no. these run of fixtures. Um, so we need to get off to a decent start. Yeah. The season, like a lot of people are saying, the season starts now. <laughs> for me, really, yeah. yeah, that's um, the new saying. Yeah. The season starts now. <laughs> it went from here. He needs, a, he needs pre-season. Now it's the season starts yeah, now. Yeah, but, the yeah. season within a season. Yeah, yeah. But... Um, yeah, man, I mean, it's inconceivable that we don't get a result this weekend. I think the crowd will have an important part to play. Yeah. I, I, what I don't want to see is if we don't score within the 10, first 10, 15, even 20 minutes, the crowd start getting too exasperated mm. and, you know what I mean, and turning on them. Turning We're going to have to support the, them through yeah. the game. I, To be fair, I think they did that um, in the Chelsea game, didn't they? Even at Man City, I think there were, there were videos, like even at 3 4 nil down, the fans were singing, mm. you know, because I felt sorry for the fans. <laughs> I but did. To go to Manchester, 12 30 kickoff, man. And, and yeah, I spoke to my brother about it. I spoke to Robbie about that, and he was like, wow, it was a horrible day. Mm. And I can imagine, man, I mean, getting up at ridiculous hours of the morning, you Driving go up there, the, you go up there in anticipation, because obviously we'd had those two previous poor results, you're thinking, the guy's going to go in there, put mm. in a performance worthy of the name, and then lo and behold, after a few minutes, you're 1-0 down, and then you get thrashed, and it's just a horrible day. Yeah. Um, but by contrast, this weekend is the perfect opportunity yeah. there, man. Yeah, redemption. I don't think no excuses will be tolerated. No, no. I mean, no. you can't even use the COVID in the injuries yeah. excuse this week. He's got everyone. He's pretty. everyone's back, you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, man, it's all to play for. Yeah. Uh, so give me your prediction for the game. I'm going 3-0. <laughs> right, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not holding. No, listen, if if Arteta's going to make it work, you've got to put on a performance in this mm. game. You've got your full team. You're at home. I think the fans have been reasonable with it. I think they to have. To be honest, considering what's happened, and they deserve a performance. And um, I think we'll win three 0 I think Aubameyang will score as well. 
Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. No, um, listen, yeah. we've defended him a lot, yeah, so if we, we have, don't, yeah. you know, we're going to be under pressure. But no, I'm Although, to be fair to him, and I know people are going to throw this back at me, it was West Brom's reserves and that, but in that game, he did look sharp. Yeah. In the game against Man City, let's be honest, man, you could have had Harry Kane, Ronaldo, Messi up front. If you're not getting the service, yeah, there's very obvious. little you can do. No. So I'm not pointing any real blame at him for that. It was just mm. a horrible performance yeah. from 1 to 11. We just never got going. Um, we conceded silly goals and we got thrashed. Mm. As simple as that. But this game is a totally different game, yeah. a totally different dynamic. Um, and yeah, I mean, let's face it, man, the portents are there. Yeah. Um, for them to go out there and perform. So there's no excuses, man. Um, I'm going to go at least by a couple of goals, man. <laughs> we might even concede. You know what we're like, especially yeah. from set pieces. 3-1. Three, 3-1, one. Three, one, yeah. Yeah, 3-1. Um, so but at least, at least a win by at least by a couple yeah. of... Like I said, I don't think uh, a scrappy win will do it. No, you think the fans would still be... I think there would they're still they're be, not. you know what I mean, a lot to be said. Mm. I think it's going to have to be a, a convincing win. So therefore, the pressure is kind of on, isn't it, really? Yeah. I don't think a little scrappy 1-0 win or <laughs> come from behind 2-1 no. win, or I don't think that's going to cut it. No. Um, so, yeah, well, I guess we'll see. Listen, if worst comes to the worst, I've got to ask you this, and we don't get the result, what do you think will happen with the manager? I don't think they'll get rid of him. I honestly mm. don't. Uh, I, I think they're going to give him at least the next three, four, five games. Yeah. Uh, you know me, listen, I, he would have been gone already if it was me, but <laughs> I get it. Um, but even if, I mean, if we were to lose, they would have, a, they would have to make a decision, man, because... <laughs> if you can't beat Norwich at home, decision to bring in motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. oh man. <laughs> if you yeah. can't beat Norwich at home, then I don't know. Yeah, I don't know I mean, where you go from? Where do you go from I there? Know. We thought Man City was rock bottom. You, you're mm. going beneath the concrete if you lose. Listen, any Norwich fans win. watching this, right? I'm trying hard not to disrespect your yeah. team. Well, just keeping it 100. I mean, Norwich fans will say, "Who the hell are you lot laughing yeah, at? We're right, actually above you in the title." Yeah, yeah. And we lost 5-0 to City, so did you. What makes you think that yeah. we're going to be a pushover? But realistically, bro, like, if we can't beat Norwich at home, yeah, psh, it. and with the guys coming back, this is, there's what can you say? You, you've got to make There's nowhere change. to hide. You've got to make a change. But then, like you said, I'm not sure if that will happen. No. I because, number go. one, who will come in? Um, and number two, I just don't think, that's in the board's plans. I mean, no. to be fair to the board, they've given this guy a lot of money to they spend. Have. They have. We are the biggest spenders in this tra particular transfer window. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, the board, let's face it, oh, they've not covered themselves in glory. No. Uh, in previous years. But on this particular window, they and have supported the manager. Yeah, so if you back the manager with money, it follows that they're going to back him with time. time as well, and it yeah. may, obviously, if they do, if we do, if we do not get the right result and then the, the board choose to back him, that's going to prove very unpopular with the fans. But, mm. you know, what do they do? Yeah. Um, well, so. I, I, think, I think we're going to win anyway. I think we'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on that, man. I, I can't see anything other than a, a, a win. Yeah. But like I said, I do think that the performance is important. Yeah, I would agree. Because I think the naysayers will not be happy with a scrappy 1-0 win or, mm. you know what I mean, a, a come from behind win or either draw or, yeah. like I said, worse still a loss. I yeah. don't think that's going to cut it. So, yeah. Okay, then. Um, so, right. So, we come to the end of the show, right? Yeah. It's been good having you on again, as yeah. usual. Uh, as you can see, Curtis comes on and he gives his honest and forthright opinions. Um, and I really enjoy having him on for that very reason. Yes. Tell the people where they can find you on social media. Yeah, right? check out the channel, Curtis Shaw TV. Numbers are growing, lots of support from all of you, so big up. I wanted to give a shout out as well. A guy messaged me um, called Ryan from New Jersey. Oh, right. And, uh, he said his dad had passed away and he okay. said his dad was a big fan of the show. So I just said I'd give him a little shout out. Man. Oh, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Condolences, man. Yeah, um, you know what I mean? Yeah, humble condolences. Mm -hmm. Not just on behalf of myself and Curtis, but the whole AFTV yeah, yeah. family, you know what I mean? Um, a loss, family loss is a, you know, horrible, devastating thing. I've been through that. 
more recently, so yeah, man. Yeah, yeah so, yeah, yeah okay. Um, what else is going on for you, bro? What are you up to? Yes, sir, man, just obviously building up to the game and, um, yeah, just hopefully we can get a win and press conference stuff and talk about that, so, mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, keep up the good work on your channel. I see you've been nominated for some awards, Yeah, man, man, man. I've won uh, three awards. Oh, wow. Um, one of them, actually, in the same category <laughs> as AFTV. <laughs> As long uh, as one of that's us wins. ironic, As long as it? one yeah. of us wins. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep it in-house, man. Yeah, keep, keep it in-house. We're all family, yeah, man. We're exactly. all family. But yeah, man, congratulations to that. I Hope you do it. well. When are those awards? Tell the people when the awards think, are coming up. I think up. the awards, um, it's about the 11th of October. Yeah. Um, so I think we'll all... So keep we'll voting, man. Going. And if you're not going to vote for AFTV, then... Yeah, I mean, you know, on. this man is here, man. You know what I mean? And to all those watching, man, please send us your comments. Make the show interactive. I'll be very interested to hear what you guys think on what we discussed today. I mean, how do you think Saturday's going to go? Um, will we get the win? Will you be happy with just a win? Or do you agree with me and Curtis that it's got to be with some swag, a couple of goals? That way you can, you know what I mean, keep the naysayers at bay for a, a, another week at least. Um, do you think it needs to be a win with a swag or would you be happy to take a scrappy 1-0 win? What do you think in the worst case scenario that if we don't get the win, um, we get a draw or, you know what I mean, the unthinkable, we don't win the game, we lose. What do you think will happen to the manager? Curtis has made it clear what he thinks should happen, um, but he's not necess necessarily sure that it would happen. What do you guys think? Let us know, man. Keep in contact with us, man. Let us know what you think. Um, but listen, thanks again for tapping in. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video. Take care of yourselves, keep healthy. We'll see you all next week. We're out.